Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, I describe what persistent Lyme is, and I give you six different ways to attack this problem, including using the two newest ideas of Dapsone and another medication called Antabuse. Treat Lyme is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD Supplements. Uh, persisters is an area where, that's getting a lot of attention in Lyme right now. And what they are is they're some of the spirochetes and some of the cysts have the ability when they've been exposed to antibiotics for a long time uh, to actually slow their metabolism way, way down and basically go into hibernation and ignore them. Okay? So the reason that's getting a lot of attention right now in Lyme research is we're trying to, we're wondering, is that the reason people with Lyme can't get better? Is that although we kill off a lot of the Lyme germs, there may be this core that's hibernating that we're not able to get at with the current ways that we use antibiotics, okay? All right. So uh, there's a petri dish experiments that were published about three years ago at a Northeastern University in Boston. And in those experiments, we've wondered if there could be persisters for some time, but in those experiments, they actually showed that there are. And what they did is they exposed uh, lime growing on petri dishes to ceftriaxone, the antibiotic. And they would wait until it actually, under the microscope, went into persisters. And what they found is about 20% of the spirochetes and 20% of the cyst form of lime would develop into these persister forms. So not all lime goes persister, but at least 20% would. Okay? Which then got a lot of people wondering, well, how do you go after it? Okay, so for instance, there's a... Um, uh, Dr. Horowitz has come up with an experiment in using a leprosy medicine called Dapsone uh, to treat Lyme under the idea that Dapsone treats leprosy, which is a persister germ. Maybe it would work with Lyme. And his studies show that there are about 54% um, of people get improvements that range about 10 to 20% on his regimen. Okay, so he's been out touting that regimen around. Okay, and I write about that. Other regimens, there's a, a, a researcher out of Hopkins University, Ying Zhang, medical doctor, that's taken his tuberculosis lab, which tuberculosis has a lot of persisters, and he now is looking at ways of doing experiments on petri dishes to find combinations of drugs that will treat persisters, okay? All right. And his most recent, he's, he's, he's shown that there are some oral regimens on petri dishes at work. The one that I found, that I tried in my practice, that I did find helpful for some, was to use a combination of doxy, bactrim, and cefuroxime together. Okay? All right. Now, more recently, he's been doing some mouse experiments that showed some promising results using an IV medicine called daptomycin, the oral medicine doxycycline, and cefparazone. And he found that that wiped out all persisters in mice. And now he's looking at trying to do a human study. Okay? Now, the problem is daptomycin is probably very difficult, or actually not probably, is very difficult to get your hands on because it's super expensive, and it's basically approved for people with uh, flesh-eating bacteria on their skin, okay? So the insurance companies are not going to pay for this for Lyme treatment at this point until there's more solid evidence that it may work, but we're all keeping an eye on what Ying Zhang is doing with his research, okay? Other ways that have been proposed and that I found help in my practice for maybe up to about 50%, 60%, is to do what I call long pulse regimens. That would be to take uh, antibiotics for two months on and two months off. That came from an idea from Dr. Buriscano. I mentioned Buriscano earlier tonight. Buriscano claims that he cured his Lyme and the Lyme of some of his patients uh, by um, basically stopping antibiotics until he got really sick. The idea being that if you get really sick, it must mean the germ has come out of hibernation and is living and is more active and making you sick, okay? And when he couldn't stand it anymore, then you go back on antibiotics. And that wound up working to be about two months on, two month off regimen, okay, all right? All right, and he claims after doing that about three or four times, he cured himself, all right? Now, I tried that with a number of my patients, and, and towards the end, I was doing this with people, too. And I found some people get some really good results, and some people got nowhere with that, all right? Now, in terms of the antibiotics, what can you use? Well, you could use prescription antibiotics, or you could go herbal, okay? So in my practice, when I was doing this, I would use two herbs found in the Cowden Protocol, which would be the Otoba and the Cat's Claw that I write about on my site, 
And I would use those as my antibiotics for the two months that somebody was on. And then I would take them off for two months. Okay. And I would do that three to four times to see if they would get somewhere. One of my best situations, I don't think she was cured, but it was a woman that I had treated for a few years with uh, oral uh, antibiotics and I think injectable antibiotics. And basically she went from zero out of 10 energy to about one to two out of 10 energy. And that was it. And we wound up doing this two month on two month off and it brought her to the level after all those years where her energy was sitting at about seven or eight out of 10. It is actually what worked for her to do that. Okay. I also have patients that I tried the Dapsone treatment on from Horowitz that had done tons of IV antibiotics before seeing me with other physicians. And when they came to see me, they were still sitting at four, five out of 10 energy. And then we wound up putting them on Dapsone and they're back being a nurse and in the hospital now, okay, um, when she couldn't even work at all, all right? She had like the best outcome I ever saw on the Dapsone. But most people get that 10 to 15, 10, 20% improvement. They don't get all the way well on Dapsone. And the trouble with Dapsone, it's very hard to take medicine. And about 30%, 40% have to stop taking it because of side effects. So it's a tough medicine, okay? So at this point, we don't have a set way of dealing with persisters, but there are these possible ways of dealing with persisters, okay? All right, and then finally, Ying Zhang, who I mentioned earlier, has been looking at um, other ways to treat persisters, and he published recently a study looking at using uh, various essential oils, and although I can't remember all of what they were, he found a certain combinations of essential oils uh, would also work on persisters. Now, I will tell you, I'm a little skeptical those are going to work in people because they have to get absorbed into our bloodstream. And we know there was a craze, I'll call it a craze, but there was a, a phase in the Lyme world where a lot of people were doing essential oils all over the place. It was a few years ago. And eventually most of those came back to trying herbal and uh, prescription antibiotics because I think it just didn't work that well. And I think the reason it didn't work well is that they're just really difficult to get absorbed, okay? So I think Ying Zhang, with some of his work, he's got to figure out a vehicle to get those things into the bloodstream. So the newest idea in treating persisters is to use a medication called Antabuse that actually was designed to treat alcoholism. And the way that we got to that is one of the researchers that's doing a lot of uh, looking at what to do for persister Lyme, a guy named Dr. Kim Lewis um, out of Northeastern University, has been looking at various drugs that might have the ability um, to treat persister Lyme. And he identified in some experiments using Antabuse. And so for various reasons, it could possibly work. One of my colleagues, a guy named Dr. Ken Liegner, uh, who practices um, out east, has um, actually recently published some studies looking at three patients in his practice that he tried this medication on, and there were some really promising results from this. Now, I would caution you that it's too early to tell if the results that Dr. Liegner has seen in his practice are going to work for all people with Lyme, or just that it was unique for his practice. But I know a number of my colleagues are starting to try this out. Uh, this is a treatment that as I get back into practice up in Seattle, I'll be looking to add in to my practice because I think it looks very promising. I would caution though again that I think it's a bit early to tell. In terms of how to use this medication and dosing, take a look at the uh, description uh, for this video uh, for links to a more comprehensive article about this uh, new experimental medication.